So our reading today is from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 21. And, and 1 John is one of the four letters we have from the Apostle John in our Bible. The letters are, are 1, 2, and 3 John, and then the book of Revelation, which is actually a letter that John writes to seven churches that he pastored in Asia Minor, which is the modern day kind of western coast of, of Turkey. Uh, John, of course, also wrote the Gospel of John. So there are five letters or five books in the New Testament that are attributed to John. In Mark 3, we read that John and his brother James, another apostle, were given a nickname by Jesus. They were called the Sons of Thunder. And a few accounts in the gospel give us a sense as to why. They, they seem to have a certain fervency a, a, about them. And when you read through the letters of John, you see some of the same tendency peeking through. John, is he has little room for middle ground. You're either off or you're on, you're hot or you're cold, you're in the light or you're in the dark, or in our case, in the scripture that we've just read today, you either love and therefore are with God, or you don't love and you don't know him at all. I actually spent a, a year, many years ago, working through 1 John line by line, verse by verse in my own quiet time in the morning. And so this letter, 1 John, carries with it a, a certain meaning to me. Now the thing is, John wasn't dumb. Uh, he knew that, that people... Uh, he knew enough about people, I should say, to know that these extremes, you know, on or off, light or dark, they, they, they don't always work out in our day-to-day -day, day life, right? We aren't always fully on, we aren't always fully off. But, but communicating in this way with what we would call would be, would, would be great hyperbole, I guess, was, was something that Jewish teachers often did. And they did it to drive home a point. Uh, Jesus himself often spoke in these hyperbolic ways. Uh, think about the Sermon on the Mount, for example. In there, did, did he really want us to cut off our hands if they caused us to sin? Or, or, or if our eyes caused us to lust, did, did he really want us to gouge them out? Uh, did he want us to go to the extreme? That's what he said in there. Well, well no. He's making a point. He's trying to drive something home that this is really important, uh, what, what Jesus is calling us to in his kingdom life. And in our letter, John uses then a similar technique to drive home a point. The heart of the matter, John says, is, is love. And if you claim to know God, which many people do today, and many people did in Jesus' day as well, or in John's day, the fruit will be in the pudding, or the proof is in the pudding. Your life will overflow with love. And if it doesn't, John says, you, you've missed the point. And, and actually, you don't really know God, even if you claim to know him, period, black or white, off and on, light and dark. This is John, right? Now, in some ways, John is also a little like me. <laughs> that is, he takes a lot of words to say simple things. I see some of you rolling your eyes through the screen here. <laughs> This isn't necessarily a bad thing, if I do say so myself. Like, like a diamond, John is, is looking at a subject matter from many different angles, seeing how the light or the idea reflects and refracts through these various angles. But the point, and you see it here in our scripture today, remains the same. He uses a lot of words, really, to say something that is very simple to us. First of all, he tells us that God is love right? And that all love is found in God and all love comes from God. The, the most notable portion of the passage that we read today is the simple expression that he uses, God is love. That's what he says, which is important, right? God, John is saying, is fundamentally a loving being. This love defines him, and the love that we know and experience in the world, it emanates from him. And that's important because if we're going to rightly understand God, the starting point then is love. We go to the core of his character. And if we find this starting point and, and settle into it and steep in it and rest in it, 
then the rest of God and maybe even the troubles we sometimes have in understanding him as we read through the scripture, his, his holiness, for example, or, or themes of judgment. When we start with love, these other things tend to fall into alignment. And, and so if we were to put it maybe in modern day terms, love then becomes like the lenses. It becomes like the glasses that that we view every part of God through. We, we, we put love on our lenses, then we look at God and all the rest of God then is seen and interpreted. And if we don't get this, and the truth is many don't, what often comes is people end up holding on to an image of God that ends up being more monstrous than godly or like C.S. Lewis, one of my favorites, will say beastly. God ends up looking more like a beast than he really is. It starts with love. And second then, if we know God, John says we will be marked by love, right? Our, our love as exampled in Jesus' self-sacrifice, which remember, the sacrifice of Jesus is always in Scripture how love is to be understood. Love is about laying down our life for the world around us. Our love then will be what marks us in the world. And this love in us and through us is there, John says, because actually God loved us first in the first place. So he's loving us and showing us love. And in that then we have the capacity, the ability to love the world around us. Um, you can imagine it like a, a fountain with cascading levels. In the first level, you have the love of God. It's, it's deep. It's, it's never ending. It continues to overflow its bounds, splashing and crashing, then into the next level below in the fountain, which is the world, which is us. And, and this love then fills us and it overflows us. And then it cascades onto the level beyond us, which is the world that is around us. But if our pool, if we look into our heart and see that it is empty of love, if we are not overflowing into the world around us, it's a sign that we have not come into alignment with God. Or if we even look at this in, in variables, it means that if, our, if there's just a trickle, that somewhere the alignment with God is, is off kilter. Or as John more bluntly states here, we don't know him. Love then becomes like this litmus test of, of our claims to know God. And, and so if we look at our lives and see that love is in short supply, then we should be alerted to something. Something is off the mark. Something is off kilter. And the answer to this dilemma, if that's what we discover in our hearts, is actually to come to God. To see and reflect again at the core of who he is, to see that he is loved, to receive his love, to love him, to dwell in his love, to experience his love, and, and to welcome us then, or welcome him then, then to remake us into people that reflect his image. So that's John's simple message for us today. Number one, it starts with God, and God is love. That is who he is. And secondly, if we know him, we too are going to be marked by this same love. And may the Lord bless you this weekend.